This is an introductory tutorial on the concept of templates in Kylo. We're currently looking at a list of existing feeds in Kylo Feed Manager. And you can see that each feed has a name that indicates the particular type of data that it processes. Feeds also belong to a category, and the type field indicates the type of template it uses. So we can see that the first two feeds are based on our data transformation template, and the rest of the feeds are using the data uh, ingest template. Templates control the behavior of feeds or the pipeline. Feed templates embody the principle of write once, reuse many times. When I create a new feed, I see the list of available feed templates. Kyla will guide me through a different workflow depending on the type of feed template I select. Now that we've seen how templates relate to feeds, let's go into NiFi and see a template in action. Okay, we're now in Apache NiFi, and I'm at the root level, so I can see all the feed categories that Kylo's created, and they've been created as process groups. And then you can see the arrows that come into the common reusable template. Inside reusable templates, we have two defined standard ingest and our data transformation. And we'll take a look inside those in a minute. So first off, when you create a feed in Kylo, uh, Kylo will automatically create a corresponding process group for the category of that feed. And then if you go inside that process group, which represents the category, you'll see that there's a process group for each of the feeds that exist in Kylo. If we open up one of those feeds, the template provided two different possible connectors uh, for a feed, either fetching data from a database or fetching from a file system. But although the template provided both connectors, notice that the database one is deactivated and only the file system is enabled. Kylo disables one of the paths based off what the user actually selected when they created the feed in the UI. So in this particular case, we're going to be reading data from the file system, and then we're going to take a relatively short path out to the standard ingest flow. So let's take a look at the processors that actually got uh, created as part of the feed. So I'm going to open up and look at the feed parameters. All these properties have specific values that relate to the feed. And where do these values come from? Well, they were injected by Kylo as a result of going through our UI stepper. So that metadata that got captured through the stepper process when we defined the schema, when we chose whether we wanted to strip the header or not, and what the final uh, structure of the table is going to be, um, all that data got injected when this feed instance got created. How did we end up with all these boxes? Well, that was based off the template itself. From that template, Kylo instantiated a feed, injected a set of values into the feed parameters. When data comes in, that it goes through this relatively short path out to standard ingest. So let's go and take a look at standard ingest. So here we're back at the root, and you can see the arrows coming out to the reusable templates. If I go into there and into standard ingest, we can see that data comes in through this input port. Now all feeds with arrows coming out of them, all data ingest feeds, eventually flow into this same NiFi process group. And that's the idea of a reusable flow. We saw that there were many process groups representing the feed-based template. Now, most of our logic for how we handle data ingest is in this single instance. So let's just take a quick walk through the standard template. Data comes in. We'll optionally strip the header of the record. We'll send the original into an archive location in HDFS. And in parallel, we'll send the flow down this path, where if we're dealing with a lot of small files, we'll actually merge those together. Uh, when we get to the initialize feed step, if this is the first time we've run, uh, we'll block here and we'll send the flow down this path, where we'll set up the HDFS folders for that feed, we'll create the hive tables for the first time, and we'll do some other initialization steps. Once we record the initialization is complete, then this will unblock and the flow will continue where we'll move the file into HDFS. We'll add an external partition to that file. And then we're going to execute Spark running through our validation and standardization rules. Continue on and we'll merge all the valid records into the final uh, managed hive table. And in parallel, we'll send it again to Spark to actually generate profile statistics about the batch. 
And then finally, we're going to set it off to Elasticsearch for that full text indexing capability that we have.